Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now thanks to this big burning boy and the fact that Saturday was the hottest day of the year in the UK so far, hitting, ready to laugh Australians, 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit, my custom gaming laptop here decided it was going to overheat. It had already been hitting high temps while gaming, but I guess the warm weather pushed it over the edge. I therefore thought that this would be the perfect time to open it up and see what's causing the issue. It's not uncommon for a laptop to overheat. I mean, we've got so much inside a thin case, but sometimes it might just be a bit of excess dust that pushes it over the edge, or something like that. This also gives us a chance to see what upgrades can be carried out because you may remember from the last video that the i5-2410M inside this thing was holding back the GTX 850M in some cases, especially as far as CPU intensive tasks were concerned. So let's get it open. First things first, we'll remove the battery, which seems to have stuck itself to the plastic here. Hopefully not with battery acid as that would be a whole other issue. Once I finally managed to pry the battery from the back, it was just a matter of undoing a couple of screws. Luckily, this laptop's internals can be accessed from the underside. Some laptops will require you to move the keyboard and touchpad assembly. One such example of that is the Acer ES1. I must have spent 20 minutes fighting with this last screw. It's just spinning round and round. It turns out it wasn't actually screwed into anything after all, and it was just jammed in here awkwardly, so I was left looking stupid for most of the day while I tried to figure out what was keeping this thing in place. I hope it wasn't built like that from new, because that is not quality control. Now after removing the back panel here, I guess you could call it, I was surprised to see that it really wasn't too dirty. I decided to remove the fan to check and on closer inspection there were a few clumps of dust here and there which were easily removable, with a quick blow. It doesn't necessarily look like much, but a little dust can have a large impact. We've also got a tiny bit of loose dust on the edge of the vent, and considering this is the only place that air can escape, it's important that this is cleaned up. Now looking at the fan a little closer, I did notice that one of the blades was missing. I'm not sure how much of an impact this would have on cooling, but it's got to have some effect. I guess the first port of call will be sourcing a new one of these. Aside from that, it's not making any horrible grinding noises, so the bearings are still good. Kind of irrelevant, I guess, if it's broken, but I wonder what caused it to snap off. Putting that to the side, and it's time to look at the other factors that may contribute to performance issues. It's important to carefully look at each component individually when diagnosing your own laptop or PC, as the problem may have a simple solution. An example of something that could give us a little performance boost would be the RAM here. Currently, we've got just a single stick of 8GB DDR3 RAM, but there is room for another module, so swapping this out for two 4GB sticks in dual channel might help eliminate some of the stutter I've experienced in games. More than likely, I'll just add another matched 8GB stick though, to ensure better all-round capabilities. More memory will help us in tasks like video editing too. So far, along with a new fan, we need another stick of RAM. Next up, let's remove the heatsink assembly itself, which will reveal the CPU and GPU underneath it. This again is a matter of a few screws. It's never a difficult task taking apart a laptop, but it can be quite fiddly, especially if, like me, you put the screws down and forget where you put them. It's an issue you'd think I would have resolved by now. This just lifts straight off after the screws have been removed. You can see that the thermal pads will also need replacing, so I'll add that to the to-do list as well. A quick look around here reveals a soldered GTX 850M, which is a bit of a shame, but the processor does look to be upgradable, and I think it would benefit from a quad-core i7 of some sort. I'll have to scour eBay for one. The i5 only has two cores after all. Don't get me wrong, it did okay, in the benchmarks a couple of days ago, but four physical cores will help this machine out quite a bit, especially if we upgrade the memory. While I'm here, I'll replace the hard drive with an SSD now. It's not a very large one, but at 128 gigs, it's enough to store Windows and a couple of games, and I just wanna see what sort of speed increase we can see in boot times, really. This will probably get replaced with a larger capacity one the next time I open this up and upgrade it, so you guys will know exactly what gets put in here and what gets taken out. Still, for now, we may as well give it some new thermal paste all round. This stuff I've got here comes in a handy to apply syringe, which if you push the plunger too hard, blasts paste all over the walls. That's not a tip, it's just me talking from experience. Not a positive one either. 
After that's done, it's time to put the heatsink back. It's as simple to reinstall as it was to remove, with just a few screws holding it in place. Despite the fan being busted, we'll put that back in here too for now. I didn't want to make three videos on this laptop, but I wasn't anticipating the overheat, and I thought why not make a video just in case you have any similar problems. So after applying the thermal paste, we'll put the back on and screw it down before reconnecting the battery. With the hard drive swapped out for an SSD, all that's left to do is upgrade the CPU and the RAM and purchase a replacement fan. Even after replacing the thermal paste, the temperature under load for the GPU has gone down a little bit, and the boot up times are thankfully much improved. It's still not the fastest laptop out there, but hopefully I'll see you in the next one where we'll install the parts that I'm off to buy right now. And we can finally turn this into something a little more capable in 2019. So thank you for watching. This isn't the last you'll see of this laptop. Hopefully it will get this upgraded sooner rather than later. For now, I am certainly glad that we've sorted the heat out a little bit and it should continue working fine until I get a chance to buy and upgrade those parts. So as always, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. If you have any recommendations for a CPU for this laptop, then please do let me know in the comments below or on Instagram at RGNHD. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.